and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful sunny Victoria here in Western Canada where it is 8.30 in the morning far to the west. I hope that all of you are having an outstanding uh, weekend so far and even though the uh, speaking uh, class topics of today are on the sadder side of life, um, I hope that your life is going extremely well for the most part. The reason for that is these uh, speaking topics actually appeared or similar topics appeared in the speaking in May and uh, one of the uh, candidates uh, requested that we discuss uh, questions, cue card questions and then now speaking part three questions that are similar, that are discussing when uh, you know we're having some of those uh, uh, more, let's say, sadder parts of uh, life experiences. Um, IELTS speaking part three in this class about feeling disappointed. This lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com. These websites power these live classes. We use our websites for student interactions. This is our academic IELTS website here. You can click this big red button uh, to join our premium IELTS package. It's just above my head there. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We're IDP affiliates, British Council partners, IELTS test registration centers. We have been helping thousands, in fact, probably millions of students now for uh, over 10 years to master the IELTS exam in the English language. For general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. I'm a certified British Council agent. I have worked with IDP and uh, British Council for a number of years now in different projects. Uh, we are an IELTS test registration center for the at-home uh, online version of the IELTS exam. Uh, so you are in great hands with us. We're here to help you um, and uh, we've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of success stories to uh, encourage you to use our uh, premium courses. Students, um, if you have questions, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, admin at aehelp.com. Uh, Suleiman says, how much does it cost? Uh, Suleiman, uh, it depends on your country. So we adjust to your local currency um, and um, uh, you will see the price will uh, be adjusted to your local currency. So it depends on where you live, okay? If you live in a country with a lower GDP, it's cheaper, higher GDP. This way we can help the most students. Good question. That's why I don't talk about the cost. It depends on where you are, okay? In India, for example, it's 25 bucks US. In Bangladesh, 25 bucks US, okay? In Canada, it's $59 US, okay? So it depends where you are. All right, uh, students, um, after this class, you've got a couple days um, of uh, no live classes, but you do have all of that course content on the websites, um, so use it. You've got the interactive course, you've got all the lesson videos, and then I'm back on the 8th with speaking part one. Uh, so lots of uh, classes coming up next week. I'm going to post this schedule on our YouTube community board. So make sure to subscribe. And we have these subscriber uh, chat classes as well. Subscribing is free. So subscribing is, it's good. Okay, make sure to do it. All right. Um, and uh, we're always releasing new videos. We've got this speaking video here for you to practice your speaking that we just released this morning. Uh, for some of you daytime um, and this has that code in it uh, as well the um, genuine nine uh, code for the websites uh, so use that code on the websites for a 10% discount okay uh, so we just finished our speaking part two class. Um, the speaking part two class, now again, this is speaking everyone, so speak and repeat. Uh, the speaking part two class uh, was about uh, a disappointing time going on a camping trip and forgetting uh, tents. Okay. Yeah, Suleiman, we try. We definitely try. So uh, we do our best for sure. You're very welcome. Okay. 
we use what's called it's called geo pricing the tech the technical term of changing prices to the country's economy it's called geo pricing um, okay um, so yeah we use geo pricing uh, all right um, so uh, for getting uh, tents going camping if you missed that speaking part two cue card class that just happened it's okay you don't need it to participate in this class uh, just keep in mind that uh, you have to connect uh, speaking part two to speaking part three now I want to focus a lot on helping as many students as possible through volunteering and I will give you tips and strategies on what to do so again these questions or similar questions appeared on the IELTS exam in May uh, so let's uh, tackle uh, and answer uh, some of these together and then we will do volunteering I will teach you strategies and tips on what to do to increase band scores and how to give those high high band 8 band 9 level answers okay so IELTS marks on fluency coherence grammatical range accuracy lexical resource pronunciation what is the most important by the way students it's not all the same so it's not like they're all the same um, so you've got fluency Okay, you've got coherence, you've got uh, grammatical range, you've got um, grammatical accuracy, you've got lexical resource, you've got pronunciation. Uh, here, let's do a little fun exercise as we start into this part three. Uh, let's uh, put, put them in order. So let's say fluency is A. Let's say coherence is B, okay. Grammatical range is C. So here's a fun exercise for you to start this off. Uh, put this into order of importance. Grammatical accuracy is D, lexical resource is E, and pronunciation is F. So put these in order of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So one, uh, two, uh, three, four, five, six. You don't have to write the write out the words. You just have to write the A, B, C, D. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. So uh, IELTS speaking is marked on these uh, criteria. Put them in order of importance. Okay, so what do you think is the most important? What would be number one out of these? Fluency, coherence, grammatical range, grammatical accuracy, lexical resource, which is vocabulary, um, and, um, and pronunciation. So what do you think is number one? A, B, C, D, E, or F? Okay, Lynette says it's B, D, C, F, A. Yeah, so number one is B, for sure. If you're incoherent and we don't know what you're saying, you get very low band scores. So coherence is number one. Coherence means actually understanding what you say, actually uh, answering the question, okay? So for example, if the question is, why do people feel, uh, or sorry, why do people frequently experience feelings of unhappiness and I said I like dogs because they are such cute animals is it fluent if I say I like dogs because they are very cute animals since they have floppy uh, ears and a wet nose um, is so I like dogs because they're very cute animals since they have floppy ears and a wet nose um, is it fluent yeah is it good grammar yeah is it complex grammar yeah is it good vocabulary it's decent my pronunciation good yeah do I get a good band score <laughs> no. I'll definitely <laughs> I'll get a very strange look from the examiner um, people are unhappy because dogs are cute. What? Uh, right. So, 
it's not coherent, obviously, right? Point made, yes. Uh, so coherence is the most important, okay? Now, of course, these are kind of connected. So coherence is the most important. Uh, what's the second most important? According to uh, Lydia, it's A. In fact, it's not, Lydia. I would put not put A as the second most important. What do you think is uh, the second most important for uh, coherence? So now you're starting to get the idea. What's the second most important for coherence? It's not actually fluency. This is where it's interesting. A lot of people don't really understand how the IELTS works. Okay, what do you think would be number three? Very good, Oana says it's grammatical accuracy. Absolutely. Uh, so it would be D. And then uh, three would be fluency. Uh, four would be uh, vocabulary. Four could be vocabulary or um, or uh, it could also be grammatical range. Uh, I might even put grammatical or uh, grammatical range in there first. C, E, and F. So that's if I had to, that would be uh, the the order of importance. Okay, so. Um, e is uh, vocabulary or lexical resource, and F is pronunciation. Okay, so coherence is the most important. It's very important that I understand what you're saying, or the examiner understands what you're saying. Um, accurate grammar. So good grammar is quite important for coherence. If your grammar is poor, it can become very difficult to understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, then fluency becomes important because if you are talking really, really slowly, then the examiner again cannot understand you or if you get stuck all the time, right? Then it's grammatical range. So are you able to use complex grammar, join your sentences, uh, make your information clear? Next it's vocabulary. Um, just so you understand uh, how unimportant vocabulary is, I don't want to say it's not important. Um, but um, here's an interesting kind of factoid. I should. <laughs> I really wish I had a sound effect for facts, like da -de -do -do -m, fact time. Um, how many words do you think uh, native English speakers use on average per day? So this, you know, a lot of people think it's all about vocabulary. Not really. Um, I mean, vocabulary is important. Don't get me wrong. You do need to learn words, especially for university. But to have a good conversation, you really don't need to have a very rich vocabulary. Um, what do you think? How many words? Yeah, I wonder if some of you are Googling. <laughs> 500 to 1,000. Statistically, they say it's 500 to 1,000. Okay, somewhere in there. So the average native English speaker on a regular day will use about 500 to max 1,000 different words. And that's it. Okay, it's closer to about 500. Okay, so most people will tell you the magic number is 500. Okay, so that shows you that it's not a lot. Okay, and, and it's not just um, in English, in other languages too, they've discovered that we actually don't use that many different words. We just put them together in different ways, okay? Uh, pronunciation, some students really get stuck on pronunciation. Pronunciation is not important. It's only important to the extent that it is understandable. So uh, whether you have a thick or thin accent, uh, pronunciation is uh, only important to the extent that the listener can understand the word you're saying. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, you can have a really thick accent in uh, certain languages, and as long as 
the examiner understands you, you know, you'll lose maybe a mark or two, but you're not going to lose a lot of marks. If I can't understand what you're saying, then yeah, that's a problem. Why? Why? Because it's a coherence problem then again, right? It's like, what are you saying? Right? Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, so that's the order, students. Coherence, most important. Accurate grammar. Study your grammar. It's important. Then work on fluency. Work on grammatical range. Learn present perfect, past perfect, conditional. Vocabulary, yes, learn it, but don't spend your whole day learning words, okay? And pronunciation, worry about it only if people are looking at you like, huh, what do you say, huh, huh, what, what, what did you, um, if people are doing that, yeah, worry about pronunciation, but otherwise, eh, don't worry about it too much, okay? IELTS speaking part three, let's talk more about feelings of unhappiness, okay? You guys are all like, yay. <laughs> Let's talk more about feelings of unhappiness. All right. Um, here we go. Why do people frequently experience feelings of unhappiness? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Do it in the chat. Write it down. I will look at what you write. At first, we will look at... Uh, the responses through writing, and then we will actually do some speaking, okay? All right. Kevin, good to see you in the class. Uh, Kevin saying, uh, people often feel unhappy these days as they set too ambitious goals for themselves and end up with reality fall falling short of expectation. Another reason is that the news today is full of doom and not bloom, gloom, uh, to boost viewership and readership. Uh, in fact, just reading newspapers headlines has already put many people in a bad mood because they're most depressed okay. All right, uh, Kevin, not bad. I, I mean, I think you have some really great uh, vocabulary here, without a doubt, some nice expressions. But I really feel that you have a missing element here. Anybody know what Kevin's missing here? So I would give this a band kind of 8, 8.5, said fluently, said with uh, good pronunciation, nice and fluent, band 8, 8.5. Um, there's a missing piece here. Uh, what do you think it is? Underworld? No, nah, it's connections are good. It's fine. Yeah, Constellation Fong, I agree. So in this response, I really feel like there should be some example. Even if it's not a personal example, um, there should be some example. So uh, in fact, just reading newspapers headlines has already put many people in a bad mood because they're most depressed from... Uh, hearing about the war in uh, Europe or about the uh, oil spill in uh, Mexico, right? I'm just making that up, by the way. But uh, yeah, some, uh, some examples. Okay, Kevin, let's get that feeling of doom and gloom really going, right? So otherwise, it's good. Okay. Uh, Domenico has this answer for us, right? Examples. Don't forget those examples. Some answers just really warrant examples. We can feel like, okay, like what, right? Like ambitious goals too. Like what? Like I'm going to move to the U.S. in two months. Might be a little bit ambitious. It takes a while to get a green card, right? There are various reasons why people frequently experience feelings of unhappiness. The reasons can include the inherent complexity of human emotions. There are various reasons why people frequently experience feelings of unhappiness. Okay, you, you've got a repeat there, Domenico. Um, uh, or I actually have a poor um, copy-paste going on here. Okay. 
Uh, so Domenico, one more time. There are various reasons why people frequently experience feelings of unhappiness. These reasons can include the inherent complexity of human emotions, which can be influenced by relationship problems, financial difficulties, or health issues. And then the example, right, Domenico? Like, um, I broke up with my girlfriend last week and I felt like the world ended. Okay, yeah. I hope that didn't happen, Domenico. Um, all right, uh, so uh, include those examples, students, okay? Let's take this weird dog's sentence out of there before people get really confused. Um, here we go, okay, so uh, next question. Let's answer this one together. What are some regular practices one should engage in when feeling unhappy? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. What are some regular practices one should engage in when feeling unhappy? Sometimes the IELTS um, asks questions in kind of a very formal complex way don't overthink it simply this question is just asking what should people do when they feel unhappy okay so nipa has an answer okay nipa begum says i think meditation is the best way of getting rid of uh, stress and depression and it can help to calm down not your mind the mind and make you relaxed uh, me puts the same calm down the mind and uh, become positive right so new information Nipa avoid information repetition okay Chani says, many people are down in the dumps because they cannot reach their goals or feel uncomfortable about the current situation as they can't handle their emotions. Uh, many teenagers in Indonesia are depressed due to uh, failure in their studies. Okay, good Chani. Do you notice those changes that I made there to uh, improve the score? Kevin says, when feeling down, individuals should frequently either find a person close to talk to them or write down how they feel. Both these approaches can help people get that negative feeling out of their minds. Last month, my friend came uh, to me to lament his dog's death and said he felt better after having a good cry. Kevin, that's a really good answer. Uh, I like how you use the word lament. Very nice. The pronunciation is lament. Lament. Okay. All right, um, Lydia says, there are several practices one should engage in when feeling dissatisfied, such as looking forward with positive anticipation and being involved in various activities. Uh, Sarah lost her vision three years ago, started to participate in acting classes in order to improve her mental health. Okay, Lydia, yeah. Anna, there are some uh, techniques to here. Let me let me take Anna's response here, and I'll teach you an idiom. Okay, with it, I almost just said it naturally, Anna, while reading. So I'm going to include it here. So Anna says there are some techniques to turn that frown upside down. It's one of those fun expressions that um, not only uh, is used in this context, uh, but also rhymes. <laughs> so it kind of, uh, it's kind of a popular one for these. Oh, let's turn that frown upside down. Like when, uh, you know, a child loses their ice cream. Oh, let's turn that frown upside down. I'll get you another ice cream, right? So um, turn that frown upside down means to uh, help uh, become happy when feeling sad okay 
So Anna says, there are some techniques to turn that frown upside down. That's one of those ones where the examiner would be like, oh, that was well used. Uh, firstly, people can go to a, a professional psychologist if they feel anxiety and depression, right? Uh, secondly, if they feel dissatisfied, they can start doing a hobby such as yoga. A healthy body uh, is a healthy uh, mind. I like uh, going for a long walk when I uh, feel down in the dumps. Right, Anna? Okay. All right, that idiom or that expression you can remember from uh, the emojis, right? Frown is when you're like upside down is, right? So you turn the frown upside down. All right, okay, students, so far so good. Um, Underworld says, according to me, uh, people should deviate their mind by doing different work and feel free to talk about the situation with their fellow mates. Sharing is a great way to work through problems. Yes, I agree. You know what? I'll give an answer for this. Some of you are probably like, Adrian, you have a degree in psychology. Why don't you answer this question for us? I will. Okay. So there are several important uh, steps one can take to turn their frown upside down. Firstly, it's important to work through the uh, problem by discussing it with others to seek emotional support. Secondly, Uh, individuals must stop themselves from ruminating and this can be done through uh, physical activity and simply remembering that the Sun will shine tomorrow it's these mantras that help a person to look towards a positive uh, future. When I lost my wallet yesterday, I stopped uh, thinking about it, told my friend uh, what happened, and planned my solution the next day. Okay. All right. Um, so nice, long, fluent answer here. As long as you're fluent, you can get out longer answers. If um, you're having difficulty with fluency, then just uh, focus on keeping your answer a little bit shorter. Okay. So here we go. There are several important steps one can take to turn their frown upside down. Firstly, it's important to work through the problem by discussing it with others to seek emotional support. Secondly, individuals must stop themselves from ruminating and this can be done through physical activity and simply remembering that the sun will shine tomorrow. It's these mantras that help a person to look towards a positive future. When I lost my wallet, I stopped thinking about it, uh, told my friend what happened and planned a solution for the next day. Okay. Um, don't ruminate. So one of the uh, biggest uh, problems that leads to depression is rumination okay so I will teach you a life hack while I teach you IELTS speaking part three uh, train your mind to stop ruminating There. 
Uh, ruminating means to cycle the same negative thought again and again. So you lose your wallet and you're like, oh, I lost my wallet. I can't believe I lost my wallet. Oh, I lost my wallet. And at nighttime, you're still thinking, oh, I lost my wallet. Um, so stop ruminating, okay? There you go, Underworld. It's uh, to think about the same negative thought again and again and again. It's a vicious cycle of negative thoughts, okay? All right. Um, so, uh, yes, indeed, Kevin. Words of wisdom. Okay, everybody. So uh, let's uh, let's get into it for real. Uh, meaning um, that uh, we want to not just type but actually speak. So as we tackle these part three questions here, uh, let's do it through uh, verbal communication through our website. Uh, we can uh, go to the website aehelp.com and you go to your My Student account. Now, um, you can access that for free, okay? You can create a free account and you will see a button there, uh, a blue button that will be a student partner speaking. Make sure your microphone is working. Make sure you have a good connection. And then um, you will see me in there as master. Let me show you, okay? So this is the website. Again, to join the premium version, you click this big uh, red button there just above my head. Uh, to try the free version, uh, you can click the green button, okay? And then you get into your My Student account. Uh, in your My Student account, again, you have your computer-based exams. For those premium course users, make sure you're using these. Your interactive course, you have your printable um, uh, practice exams, workbook, study uh, plan. You have your lesson videos. Uh, you have your audio CDs uh, for even the reading and pronunciation practice. So check that out. You've got additional services for statement of purpose, academic CV. Um, and then here to the right, you have task one, task two writing, and you have your student partner speaking um, and your speaking interview practice. And then you even have your at home IELTS registration in some countries. If you see it, uh, like Canada, for example, you can um, click on that and register for your IELTS exam from home. Okay, uh, so here, student partner speaking. Accept the terms. All right. Um, Srinivas, I see your question. Um, so uh, we reply personally uh, to emails. Um, for some common questions, we do use a bot as well, like where's my passport, uh, password. So I think the answer, Sri, uh, Srinivas, is both here. Okay. All right, um, okay, so we're in here. Everybody in here, you will see uh, lots of uh, students, uh, your fellow peers. Um, you will see me in here as master, okay? Um, and then uh, let me put on my headphones so I can hear you. Uh, you can uh, send me a notification that you want to volunteer. So we have uh, Zafar Sonova in here, Abiskar, Manisha, Juan Pablo. Um, Juan has been very ambitious today, so we'll give Juan a chance. Uh, Juan, are you ready? Okay. Thu, I see you as well. I can see that you're really ambitious to showcase your English today. So we'll get there. All right, Juan. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Juan. How are you? I'm doing great. What about you? I am doing fantastic. Juan, we've got Mensaje asking here, what do you mean by taking the IELTS at home? I'll explain that real quick for everybody. Uh, Juan, when you use the website, do you see that uh, little red uh, button that says uh, register for IELTS? Mm. No, I don't see it. Let me show you. You don't see it, right? Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. there's a button here, and I'm going to explain this um, 
for just a quick second, Juan. The reason that you don't see it is because Argentina then does not have this yet. So everybody, Juan is in Argentina. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why Juan does not see it is because as far as I know so far, Argentina does not have this option. So there's three ways to do IELTS right now. Uh, one is to go into the exam center and do a paper-based test. That's where you get all of the questions delivered on paper. You write with your pencil or your pen. You've got your eraser and you're doing like traditional how do we say it Juan old school right Juan old yeah. school <laughs> old school <st> old <laughs> school style um, so we're doing old school style um, and then um, the second way is the computer base where you go into the exam center you sit at a computer and then you do the exam through the computer through a piece of software basically and the third version, it's the newest one that came out in the last uh, 12 months, is what's called the home-based test. That's the new school. And uh, I think there's about 10 countries that have it. Uh, it uses facial recognition software and all kinds of interesting wow. um, technology. Oh mm -hmm. Is the, uh, the results are the same than the paper, basic sum? Yeah, I mean, the experience is much closer to the computer-based version, right? But instead of going to the actual... So, <laughs> the question is why. Juan, can you guess why they don't have this everywhere yet? And why they're... It's like what they're trying to figure out with this home computer-based version that's different than the... You go to the exam center computer-based version. There's two uh, problems that they're trying to figure out. Can you guess what those two problems are, Juan? Um, maybe technology. No, not all countries have a stable internet. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one issue that they have to figure out is if somebody's doing their IELTS from their home computer. A is their computer good enough? Is their compute? Is their internet connection good enough? Um, because you know it's an exam, and if there are a lot of technical issues, then obviously we're not getting valid results. We're not getting correct um, results, and that's a problem for a lot of reasons. What do you think is the second one? Uh, let me guess. <laughs> uh, people gonna fake identity yeah very good you do see it's not rocket science when you really think about it critically you, you can figure it out right like um, so cheating right when somebody mm -hmm. can do their IELTS from at home then yeah faking their identity or for example having your phone open underneath your monitor and you mm -hmm. know having chat GPT <laughs> giving you the answers while you're doing the test in real time that could be a serious issue right so oh, um, that will work for writing test one or text two as well <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh absolutely yeah you could do a lot of uh, interesting um, things so uh, they have so that's why they have some pr quite advanced technology to make sure that that's not happening right like facial tracking and eye tracking so if they see your eye going mm. somewhere off screen <laughs> the whole time they'll know that you're <laughs> doing something all right so um, <laughs> So yeah, so it's an interesting system. I think it's in about 10 or 12 countries right now that it's available. And um, the way our system works is it recognizes your IP. So it will tell you uh, if it's available in your country. Definitely check. If you have an IP that's being bounced around, you need to make sure that it's available in your country. But that was a good question. Okay, so that's the three ways. So thanks Juan for letting me discuss that. And we'll get yeah. into some questions, uh, Juan. Um, all right, Juan depressing topic for today how do you feel about that uh, it could be I I don't know uh, in the case I get some of some of these questions uh, I hope no not to get emotional like you said it could these questions can be not an emotional trigger mm -hmm. and uh, yeah uh, because if you get emotional and you start thinking about those situations you stop uh, feeling well and also thinking straight and uh, it could be like a self uh, boycott exactly right? yeah that's a very good way to say it it's like you're boycotting yourself absolutely mm -hmm. um, boycotting means to basically uh, create um, a difficult situation or a non-functional situation for yourself right uh, we use that when um, with stores uh, but it was good in this case uh, Juan but we use it with boycotting a shop when you feel like a shop is not behaving ethically or a business then you can boycott the shops tell all your friends not to go there not to buy 
their uh, products or services. So that's boycotting. Um, yeah, absolutely, uh, Juan. I agree with you. Now, interestingly, though, Juan, on that note, and this is important for everybody else to know, um, it's not just about any situations. It can be the same. So at the end of the day, humans are emotional. So there could be a question like talk about an exciting moment um, that happened in the last few years. And, you know, you went bungee jumping and you get way too excited and you start getting into some really strange stories and confusing language because you're too excited to tell the examiner about your bungee jumping experience. So it can go both ways, right? Does that make sense, mm -hmm. Juan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's do this. So let's just jump into it. Juan, you ready? Yeah. All right. Let's talk more about feelings of unhappiness. Uh, why do people frequently experience feelings of unhappiness? Uh, it could be a lot of things. But I think it's mostly because of like situations, like disappointments and problems that people experience, and also the lack of ability to cope with those situations emotionally and mentally. Uh, also, the news, uh, watching too much uh, television, and also listening to the radio, and uh, and the news can be really stressful these days. Uh, in my case, for example, I stopped watching the news like a couple of months ago and I definitely feel much, much better. What are some regular practices one should engage in when feeling unhappy? Um, some things that or some, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, some of the, thing, the things people can do in order to feel better when they're feeling down or depressed or stressed can be activities. Um, that help uh, release uh, endorphins in, in their body, like doing exercise, going for a jog, or maybe reading a book. Could be something that uh, <laughs> relaxes people, and this definitely can help people feel better and cope with these situations. Okay, good. Uh, Juan, let's stop there. Uh, Band 8. Band nine, uh, for sure, somewhere in that range. Um, eight, eight point five, for sure. Eight, eight point five, for sure. Avoid repetition. Avoid the word things. Anahita there in the yeah. chat was like, avoid things. <laughs> you gotta stop saying things. Um, yeah, especially at the when start I did of the it, <laughs> I wanted to replace it, but. Uh, it's, I don't know. I <laughs> it's often an easy replace too. You know, like that's the that's the part of it that's uh, so frustrating is. It's quite actually, e it's quite easy to replace it at times. You just have to keep it simple. So um, why do people frequently experience feelings of unhappiness? It could be a lot of things. Um, what could work instead of the word things? You could say situations, okay? So there are some other common nouns that are quite broad, mm -hmm. but they're still better than things, right? So it could be a lot of situations or it could be a lot of events or a lot of experiences. All of those would work better here, okay? Mm -hmm. So it could be a lot of situations, but I think it's mostly because of uh, common life experiences. Okay, I really like this uh, use of language here, Juan, the inability to cope emotionally and mentally. It was a very good uh, use of the verb cope. Okay, coping, our coping mechanisms. Okay, very good. Um, you have good answers. You tend to draw them out a little bit. Um, be more concise and get to the example a little bit faster. That way I think you can get to that band nine, Juan. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, uh, here, next one. Some of the things that people can do. What can replace the word things here? Activities? Yes. <laughs> activities. <laughs> Again, not that bad, right? You just have to think of it. So some of the activities that people can do when feeling down or stressed um, uh, to help release endorphins. Endorphins, very good. Um, endorphins are your happy transmitters. They're the chemicals in your brain that make you smile, that make you feel calm and make you feel um, no pain. So, there, there is another one called, uh, I couldn't remember the name, serotonin? It maybe? is serotonin. Serotonin is your, uh, your happy okay. transmitter, yes. Yeah. Um, yes, the, the four big um, ones in your body, for those of you who are into understanding the human nervous system and mind, are um, dopamine, it's like the king of all, um, serotonin, 
Um, acetylcholine, I'm not going to teach you about that today, but you can look into it. Acetylcholine um, and um, epinephrine, which are the endorphins, okay? Those are the four big ones. Keep those in balance and you're a happy camper, Juan. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say dopamine. It's the most popular, I think. Dopamine is like the mother of all. It's, um, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, I'm not going to get into too much um, biopsychology <laughs> with everybody mm -hmm. right now. We'll <laughs> stick to IELTS. But uh, yeah, to be happy and to feel good, you want balance. The key is balance. You don't want any of these to be unbalanced. Popo says cocaine. Cocaine, of course, being an illegal drug derived from the coca leaf. <laughs> uh, cocaine affects uh, acetylcholine, um, and uh, that's why it makes you feel all hyper. Um, so it impacts acetylcholine, that one. Same with nicotine, cigarettes, impacts acetylcholine. So anyway, that's just a little bit for those of you who are curious. Uh, Juan, thank you so much for that lovely answer. Again, concise, quicker to the example, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Score. All right, thanks, Juan. Thanks, Adrian. See you. Bye for now. All right. Bye. Let's give Juan a thumbs up there. It was uh, helpful, okay? All right. Uh, good one, students, yes. Um, so let's uh, check somebody else here um, who maybe did not uh, have a chance uh, to uh, interact with us uh, last time. Um, Domenico, we'd love to hear from you about your sorrows and woes. Domenico, are you ready? If you're there, oh, there's Domenico. Hello. Hi, Domenico. Sir, what have you been up to, sir? I have been busy organizing um, our new home. We moved, my family and I, in the last oh. month, and uh, that's been keeping us quite busy. Thank you for asking. Yeah. yeah. And I was coming, uh, coming along. Slowly but surely. It's challenging with two yeah. small children. <laughs> but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. And one, one hand a baby and the other hand the broom. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And the sun. <laughs> all right. But I'm a happy guy, so all is good. <laughs> That's all right. the most important thing. Uh, Domenico, let's jump into a few questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes, I am. Absolutely. Okay, here we go, Domenico. So uh, let's talk about uh, feelings of unhappiness. Is it beneficial to experience unhappiness? Well, I believe uh, feeling unhappy may, see, may be seen as undesirable, but I, but I'm also of the opinion it can serve as a catalyst for personal growth and self-reflection. I believe it. Uh, Experiencing a happiness can prompt individuals to reevaluate their lives, make necessary changes, and develop resilience. Is it common for individuals to feel unhappy? Well, that's a very difficult question for me to answer. Well, I believe it is. Uh, unhappiness is a universal human experience. It's, a com it's common for individuals uh, to encounter periods of uh, unhappiness at various points in their lives. For example, when, when you experience an, an, an uh, admission exam failure, this can trigger uh, this can trigger intent, an intent as well as a deep sense of unhappiness, uh, but it may differ from person to person. Okay, let's stop there.
All right. I believe I got most of that second answer. The first one, not so much. Um, lovely English, great vocabulary, great expression. Work on that fluency, just smoother, quicker um, use of English, uh, Domenico. Um, otherwise, uh, very good. Um, so, and uh, stay on topic, and especially in that second one, I'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, first question here was, yeah. is it beneficial to experience unhappiness? First of all, you uh, it was a very intelligent answer that you gave. Uh, you realized that yes, of course, right? Without <laughs> it's that uh, it's that age old wisdom, right? Without darkness, there is no light. Without light, there is no darkness, right? So um, you have one to understand the other, right? So without darkness, there is no light. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would sound very prolific. Remember that word from one of the previous classes? Very prolific for the examiner. Yes, IELTS examiner. Without darkness, there is no light. Without depression, there is no joy. Um, so uh, it was very smart. So you said, well, I believe feeling unhappy is undesirable. So simplify. Sometimes you're a little bit on the overly complicated end, Domenico. But I'm also of the opinion that it can serve as a catalyst uh, for personal growth. Um, everybody watching, learn from your peers, okay? This piece of vocabulary, catalyst, and um, the word serve, I have server, uh, serve. Serve as a catalyst is a very nice expression. Where did you learn that, Domenico? Serve as a catalyst. I, I actually, I actually looked through the equations this morning and I practiced some vocabulary related to the, to the topic. Awesome. That's really great that you're doing that because it's just, it's lovely to hear those very precise, natural, um, high level uh, intellectual ways of responding to these kinds of questions. Um, serving as a catalyst. Um, so the word catalyst actually comes from chemistry. Uh, Fuang. <laughs> right? So, well, I don't, I'm laughing, I know, but uh, some of you that were in the, the class, uh, uh, that was before Fuang was talking about her neg negative experience with the chemistry exam. Uh, the word catalyst uh, is used in chemistry specifically quite a bit. It's an agent uh, that assists a function. Okay, so um, when you add a catalyst, it, it uh, initiates an event creates an event um, and the expression is serve as a catalyst. Domenico, can you just repeat after me? Serves as a catalyst. Serves as a catalyst. Very nice. Serves as a catalyst. Yeah, very nice expression. So personal growth, another nice uh, collocation. Self-reflection, of course. Yep. Developing resilience. Very nice. Okay, so, so great vocabulary there. Um, your band score is definitely in the seven five range. Uh, had you given me that answer more fluently, it'd be all the way up to band nine. Okay, Domenico. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, I'm working on uh, increasing my speech, my speech speed, which which has been impacting my overall speaking score and. Last uh, two days ago, two days ago, I may I took a full IELTS uh, mock test, and I got uh, I got six point five, uh, but the examiner actually is a uh, well, is from Canada, from Canada, mm -hmm. an, ID, an IDP IDP examiner. It told me. Well, you had and you told me that I had strong vocabulary, good use of collocations, but uh, we need to work. We need to work on fluency. Fluency is. He told me that fluency was pulling me down. Yeah, just like what because I said. Right? Yeah. yeah, but he said some examiners may give me seven for speaking like me yeah exactly yeah because i have a higher level of appreciation for coherence so some examiners get a little bit stuck it's um 
um, if I had to, like if you said, Adrian, why? What is the, who is the examiner that will give me seven uh, or even a seven five? And who is the examiner that will give me a six or a 6.5? So um, examiners that have more experience will tend to give you a higher mark because they realize that you're actually fluent and you still fall within the range of okay fluency just on the very low end. So there are actually native speakers who speak close to that speed they're just very slow spoken okay but that's the lower end mm -hmm. it's definitely on the lower end so you want to increase your speed um, and then more experienced examiners so those examiners that have been doing the outs you know for five six seven years like myself or Adam who appears on our channel they would give you a seven maybe even a seven five because they go okay he's just a very methodical slow speaker but at the end of the day he's got great vocabulary great grammar clear pronunciation he deserves a good to very good user of the English language okay so yeah. so it's it's kind of it has to do kind of with experience in that in this case okay yeah I, uh, for example i try to push myself for a quicker and quicker speech by recording my voice with my mobile phone you, you know it it takes practice it, it is. takes practice it is. It is. And so what you want to do too, uh, and everybody who's kind of in, in a similar type of situation as Dominico, what you want to do is you want to have uh, conversations where you're not concerned so much about the vocabulary. So, you know, try to answer these questions again, Dominico, but don't really worry about, you know, saying like acts as a catalyst or um, serves as a catalyst, but just use the first easiest, simplest words that come to your mouth and then, or your mind and your mouth, and then just say them quickly so focus more on speed than on vocabulary or on grammar so sacrifice that grammar or that vocabulary and then the two will eventually kind of come together does that make sense yes it does okay all right because i f i do find dominico that when you're not choosing your words so meticulously then you do tend to go a bit faster for sure okay yeah all right yeah Okay, Domenico, I have... That's for sure. Thank you so much, sir. A lovely day. Yes, you're very welcome. Bye, Domenico. We'll talk again. Bye. All right. So um, that was good. Give uh, Domenico a thumbs up there. That was fantastic. Yeah, so, you know, it's one or the other, right? So for fluency, we often do have to sacrifice vocabulary, grammatical range. Um, we find that balance, right? Okay. Uh, Thu. Let's see if you are there, Thu. Are you ready? Yeah, practice for sure. I mean, that's you know, I'm uh, my hot. One of my hobbies is running, and I ran a couple of races in the last month. And uh, I get frustrated that my legs don't move faster. I feel the energy, but my legs don't move faster. And I realize that I have to practice just running faster. So I, uh, I started doing treadmill runs that are faster and faster. I literally just push the treadmill to make me almost fall over. And, um, and it's the only way I can speed up my legs. I can run long, but I need to run faster. Okay, uh, Thu, if you're still there, let me know. I know it's getting really late. I think Thu is in Vietnam. She might have given up. I'm not sure, Thu, if you're still there or not, but um, we'll see. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Abiscar, I see that you just came online here, so you probably, you're probably there. Are you ready? Hi, Abiscar. Hopefully you're there. You're one of our premium students. Good to see you. Uh, Thu, I'll circle back to you. I see that you're back there again, but Thu, I'll circle back, okay? Hi, Adrian. Hi, Abiskar. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. And what about you, Adrian? I am doing fantastic. Abiskar, we've spoken before, have we not? Yeah, it's my second time. Yeah, I thought so. I recognize the I, I kind of recognize the names and the voices usually. All right, how have you been, Abiskar? Yeah, I'm doing great. And you know, uh, next week, uh, next Saturday, I'm going to attend my exam. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> good. Exciting times. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> All right. Good. I'm, um, I'm very eager to attend the exam now. I think you will do fantastic. Well, let us know, okay, once you do the exam and then you have your marks and uh, 
and okay, uh, come back and visit us and let us know how it went. We, lo we always love to hear, and students love to hear how their Definitely. peers are doing, right? So, all right. Yeah. Okay, Abiskar, let's jump into some questions. Um, are you ready? Yeah, of course. Okay, here we go. Um, let's talk a little bit more about feeling unhappy. Uh, what are some ways in which people can prevent or alleviate feelings of unhappiness? Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, what are some ways in which people can prevent or alleviate feelings of unhappiness? Uh, people can eliminate uh, unhappiness by uh, going on a hiking, doing on a, involving on a recreational activities, or sometimes reading books or enjoying time with your friends, and even doing some meditation and yoga. So that really help to uh, relieve the stress. Uh, so I believe that this way I really help. Do adults generally experience more unhappiness than children? Sorry, sorry, I got the no uh, lots of notification from the YouTube, so it's difficult to listen when uh, catch it clearly. Do adults generally experience more unhappiness than children? Ah, uh, uh, I think that uh, adults uh, face several difficulties on ac their academic life, their love, love relation life. So um, instantly they uh, face trouble, so they are more uh, uh, unhappiness as compared to the child. Uh, child are very um, curious and uh, instantly uh, change their mind because they are so volatile. So uh, I believe that uh, the young star are more um, uh, unhappy than uh, child as compared to the children. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop there. And I'll give you some feedback, okay? Okay. All right. Um, so first of all, band score, right? I'm sure you're curious, especially with your exam coming up so quickly. I think your band is around a 6.5, okay? Uh, you're definitely fluent, uh, and you're moving from uh, fluent to good user of English language. You have some grammatical errors that are, and word choice uh, errors that make your response a little bit confusing. Like in this last one, you said, I believe that youngsters are more happy than children. It sounded like I think you wanted to say adults, I, or I definitely misunderstood mm -hmm. some part of yeah. your response there, but it was a bit confusing. Um, and it was repetitive. So not only did you confuse me, but you were repeating information that you already said. However, here's the good news. Uh, you can improve your score quickly um, for your test in the next few days, okay? What I really want you to focus on when you're in your exam is instead of um, repeating your answer or giving more and more answers, uh, focus on your explanations and examples, okay? Especially mm -hmm. your explanations. So even if you don't include an example every time, make sure to always include that explanation. Your explanations are really missing. For that second one, you had a short explanation. You said that uh, adults face several difficulties because of their academic and love life, but it wasn't a clear explanation. I'll, uh, so when adults have you know, their academic life, their financial life, their love life, um, what do they have more of than children? In one word, what's the word? What do they have more of than children? What what do they have that children don't have, which can create more problematic situations? Somebody uh, in the think, in the chat can yeah. answer this too. So adults have more. Yep, yeah, Manasaje just gave the word. Fuang also gave another word that works well. Ria has the word. AJ has the word. Yep. Yeah. Responsibilities, right? Adults have a lot of responsibilities. And when we don't fill those responsibilities, that's a source of, um, of, of uh, difficulty, right? So we are responsible for our children. We're responsible for our wives, our family, our work, our job, our clients. So there are just more and more ways <laughs> to have problematic situations that lead to disappointment, such as losing a high-valued client, not being able to pay rent on time. Um, so these, okay, does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah. the explanation, now in your first answer, the explanation was completely missing 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. are some ways in which people can prevent or alleviate feelings of unhappiness? And I love your confidence, by the way. Great confidence. Make sure to keep it. You have good English. Go in with the same confidence. You said, oh, can you repeat, please? I, I didn't catch that. I was like, okay, fine. Um, so you said people can eliminate unhappiness. You did a really good job of using the question here. You said people can eliminate unhappiness by doing hiking or some physical activities. Um, what you need to have going on in your mind is this giant why question. Three letters in your head when you're in your speaking exam. Why? W H why right why so why why does hiking or physical activities um, eliminate unhappiness mm -hmm. why can you answer it for uh, me oh okay um uh, uh how can i speak that uh different uh extra physical exercise uh give uh, types of stress reliever uh, according to the many health professional so that make uh, them stress free after their workout so i think um, that uh, that make people calm and serene yeah okay um repeat after me because exercise helps to burn off negative energy oh yeah <laughs> exactly so just repeat after me because exercise helps to burn off negative energy. Uh, because exercise helps to burn off negative energy. It takes a person's mind off of their problems. Uh, it takes off a person's mind from their problem. It takes a person's mind off their problems. It takes a person's mind off from the off their problems. Yeah. I had a fight with a coworker, so I went for a workout at the gym after to take my mind off the situation. Mm, it's really difficult to get. <laughs> Just try it. Just try it. As Romelia says, it's blowing off steam at the gym. So I got into a fight with a coworker. I went to the gym to blow off some steam. Uh. I go. I went to the gym after fighting with uh, after fighting or uh, with a coworker. After fighting with the worker, and that I feel I feel a relief to blow off some steam. To blow off some steam. Yeah. Right. Literally visual, like boop. Ooh, like steam yeah, <laughs> right to blow off some steam <laughs> yeah to blow okay. off some steam yes absolutely yeah. okay uh, I'm so going to not down it <laughs> it's interesting expressions um examples uh, explanations especially the explanations okay that's what you have mm -hmm. to focus on all right so why always answer the why the other reason you need to do this abeskar is because if you don't what will actually happen uh with you in part one and in part three is the examiner will continuously say why so in part one they'll say why that's literally the mm -hmm. question that they'll ask they'll go why why if they feel like you're missing all of your explanations they'll keep asking you why so the first time that you hear the examiner ask you why in part one it should be like a light bulb going off in your head oh yeah Adrian said I have to give explanations or they're gonna keep asking me why 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 okay in part three if you're still not giving the explanations they're going to ask can you elaborate can you give me details can you uh, explain further so they will ask you okay the examiner will ask you for that if you're not doing it however that will lower your score okay if the examiner mm -hmm. has to ask you every two questions why or can you explain mm -hmm. then your score starts to go down okay mm -hmm. so be okay. very careful because you will hear I'll it. Keep it okay i'll keep it my my mind okay abiskar the best of luck on your exam okay. i will keep my fingers <laughs> crossed and come back and tell us how it went okay okay see you thank you arjun okay bye bye, bye abiskar all right, let's give Abiskar uh, fingers crossed. I'm pretty sure there's emoji for that, right? <laughs> okay, so, all right. Um, okay, uh, let's take somebody else. Uh, Pushpa, premium student, volunteer. We haven't heard from you, come on. Pratam, another premium student. Get in there, premium students. Volunteer, let's hear your voices, especially if you've never done it uh, before, okay? So let's hear from you. Um, 
who have we not heard from recently here? Let's see, maybe Lynette at the very bottom of the list. Lynette, are you ready? Okay. Lynette, are you there? I don't hear you. Yeah. Hi. Oh, there you are. I'm here. How are you? <laughs> Probably some connections. So uh, I'm doing really well. I'm preparing for my exam. It's um, on Saturday, next Saturday, yeah. Ooh, like a biscuit. Yep, yeah. you guys are going to be sitting at the same time. Uh, where are you again, Lynette? What? So uh, I'm actually in Norway, but yeah, I'm from Ukraine. Oh, okay, so uh, Abiskar is going to be done way before you because I think Abiskar is way further <laughs> to the east. So he's going to be sleeping by the time you're in your exam. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Lynette, uh, well, um, good luck on the upcoming exam. I'm sure you won't need it. You'll do fine. Um, and uh, let's do a little bit of uh, practice. Uh, Let's get it. <laughs> For it, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, are you ready to talk a little bit about unhappiness? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Um, what are the consequences of feeling unhappy? So uh, when a person feels um, dissatisfied, um, that makes people, that makes a person really um, distressed. So uh, the person cannot cope with some difficulties it uh, impacts on um, his or her mind and it just it gets more um, difficult to um, find solutions so i remember the time when i uh, <laughs> when i had some consequences after i felt so disappointed and it was after my failure in the exam uh, it's cool so yeah. Has there been an event in your country that caused widespread unhappiness? Actually, yes. Um, there was, and nowadays, um, the war in my country, and it caused uh, such a wide um, dissatisfaction for all the citizens of Ukraine. And uh, now we are struggle and we are fighting with some um, with some problems, yeah, issues, and uh, I guess it just influenced so much. Okay, right. Yes, of course. Um, okay. So again, very emotionally charged question, right? And especially for yeah. you right now. Um, but uh, that is the odds. And these were the questions that came up. So you never know. And um, it, because you're in Norway and mm -hmm. you are doing your exam in Norway, uh, there is a chance. I believe the examiner does know your nationality. It is on their sheet when they're doing the speaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they see a lot of students and they might not be able to keep all the information in mind. So I, it's likely that they will try to avoid sensitive topics like the war, or the conflict that's going on in the Ukraine. However, you never know. So we need know. to come up with other ideas. Yeah, I mean, you can. If you're able to talk about it somewhat indifferently, you know, then fine. If it creates a lot of emotional stir, then avoid it for sure. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but um, but definitely, you know, don't go down an emotional path, right? So uh, avoid that yeah. if possible. Okay, uh, let me jump back a little bit. So first of all, your English is quite good. Okay, you're very fluent. You've got good pronunciation. You've got good intonation. I think your band score is easily at the seven point five to eight range. Okay, for your speaking, mm -hmm. I do think that you can perform at an even higher level. So you can perform. At I the know. Band. I know. Yes, I'm just worried. Yeah. Okay, there, it's technique. So when when you get into the band eight, band nine level, it comes down to technique. And it's not about so much English anymore, like vocabulary or grammar, but it's really about communication and controlling content, okay? So mm -hmm. here this question, what are the consequences of feeling unhappy? It's a tricky one, 
Okay, um, and you can even name it. So when you hear a tricky question like that, um, and by the way, the more questions they ask you, the further they go in part three, that's a good sign. That means that, you know, they recognize you have good English, so they're asking you more and more challenging questions to see mm -hmm. if you're a band eight or a band nine. They've decided, okay, this person's a, definitely a band seven, seven, five. Let's see if they're a band eight, 8.59. So, uh, so it's a good situation to have these challenging questions, and you can even say like that's a that's a tricky question. That's a tricky question. Okay. Okay, just to give yourself a bit of time to digest, think about the question, and then you said so when a person feels dissatisfied, that makes a person really distressed. So a person cannot cope with some difficulties. It's good English, but it's called bad communication. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the reason why is because it's called circular reasoning. Okay, uh, so this is a tip for everybody, especially for those of you who are in those higher bands. But you know, band six uh, candidates do this as well. It's called circular reasoning. Do you know what that means? Circular reasoning. Um, I heard it for the first time. Okay, circular reasoning is um, like a snake eating its own tail. So um, okay. it's basically where. Uh, you're explaining a concept with itself, right? So I'm yeah. feeling really sad because I'm kind of depressed. I'm depressed because I'm kind of unhappy. Okay. And I'm unhappy because I'm having a bad day. And it's kind of like, mm, what? <laughs> right? So <laughs> yeah. um, I got that you're feeling bad. Um, why though? I'm not sure. Uh, so that's called circular reasoning, right? And it's, um, it's, it's very confusing for your listener, obviously. Right? It's confusing for yourself. Uh, so the the tip here when you get into these types of questions and answers is to try to take abstract ideas. Feelings are very abstract. We can't touch them, right? They're, they're in our mm -hmm. heads. They're, they're not visible. It's not a table. It's not a chair or a cup. So we need interpretation. We need to change that into physical form. Okay, that's how we get out of circular reasoning, right? So let me show you. Um, that's a tricky question. So when a person feels satisfied, that makes, what does it make? You had a good until there, there, and then now think about the real world. So what does it make? So what does it impact when a person feels dissatisfied? It affects daily life. Okay, let's say. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Thing. Yep, yep. So that's mm -hmm. good. So now make that into even more physical. So when a person is dissatisfied, that uh, impacts daily life negatively. Yeah, daily life negatively. Negatively. Um, like what in daily life? So, um, 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 just like in what? The workplace. Like workplace. It, okay. Yeah, good. workplace. And um, relationships. Relationships, right? Okay. Now make that even more physical, more real life. Mm. Like what in the workplace? Oh. <laughs> give me just almost give me an example of of a way that uh, feeling unhappy would impact. Um, so, so for example, yeah, a person um, has a project, right, and. Uh, um, yeah, after some difficulties in uh, his life, it's <laughs> what? In life, they are reason. not able to deliver the project on deadline, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so even more, f so it, when uh, you are in the cloud of abstract ideas, ideas that we can't touch, you have to get out of that because that becomes extremely difficult to communicate to people around you. In your head it might make sense, but it won't make sense to others. So you have to make it sensible. And to do that, you have to keep translating and interpreting that abstract idea into more and more physical concepts, right? It's a great way to be fluent. And when we think about it, we can do it, right? It's just a matter of practice. Mm -hmm. So that's a tricky question. So when a person feels de dissatisfied, that impacts daily life negatively, like workplace and relationships. A person has a project and after difficulties in life, they're not able uh, to meet deadlines. And, to meet deadlines. and then yeah. to make matters worse, they get into a fight with their boss. That's cool. Yeah. Just repeat me. <laughs> and then to make matters uh, worse. Yeah. <laughs> and then to make matters worse, they get into a fight with their boss. Um so um a person has a project and after difficulties in life they're not capable able to meet deadlines and uh 
um, after 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 to make matters worse yeah to make matters worse and um, they had a fight yeah to make matters boss. worse their boss <laughs> Okay, and then if you're really quick and clever, as you are, because you're quite fluent, you can just throw in an example, a smooth example. I almost uh, got fired from work <laughs> um, like this after a bad breakup. I almost um, had fired from my boss, my well, my work uh, after I had a breakup. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, that's so, emotional and then, yeah. Right? So here's the full answer. What are the consequences of feeling unhappy? That's a tricky question. Um, the negative outcomes when a person is dissatisfied is that it impacts life, uh, like the workplace and the relationship. Uh, a person has a project after difficulties, they're not able to meet deadlines. Uh, to make the situation even worse, they get into a fight with their boss. I almost got fired from work because I had a bad breakup and I took my baggage into uh, the office. You don't have to repeat all the same words, just the mm -hmm. same concept, okay? What are some consequences of feeling unhappy? So that's a tricky question. So from when a person is dissatisfied with um, that when a person dissatisfied that impacts their life negatively like workplace and relationship and um, for example a person has a project and after difficulties in life um, they are not able to meet deadlines and then to make matters worse they get into a fight with their boss so for example i almost get fired from work like this after a after a bad breakup with boyfriend okay Good. I don't want to say good because it's not a good thing to happen, but um, a good situation to happen. But, uh, but it's a very good answer. Okay. So a uh, very important tip for everybody, especially when you get into part three questions. Part three questions sometimes can be very abstract. They can deal with philosophy, with emotions, with uh, topics that we cannot touch, we cannot see. It's your job as a good communicator to take those ideas and make them understandable for the examiner by interpreting into the real world. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, avoid circular reasoning, all right? It happens to all of us, but you want to avoid that, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, Lynette, good luck on your exam. And uh, just like I said to Abiskar, do come back and share with us your experience after, okay? Thank you, I will, yeah. <laughs> all right, bye, Lynette. Bye. All right, that was Lynette, uh, everybody. And uh, again, um, you need to practice with each other as well, not just with me, okay? Uh, this is aehelp.com. The interface that we're using is the um, student partner speaking that's right there, okay? Uh, definitely interact with each other, practice with your peers. It's there for everybody. Um, students, uh, for the premium version of our course, it's worth it. Help us help you, right? support us to support you um, join the premium version by clicking the big red button there it's a one-time payment lifetime access we tried to make it accessible as much as possible thank you to all my volunteers uh, in this class and in the last I will be back on Thursday um, so for those of you who have uh, exams on Saturday you'll have a few more chances to volunteer uh, before then and lots of practice go to the exam early okay uh, we will be kicking off uh, Thursday with uh, part one of uh, the speaking section so the introductory questions the general questions and again lots and lots of strategy there for you at aehelp.com glshelp.com so uh, check that out uh, thank you members thank you viewers uh, it was lovely having you here with me uh, today and uh, you're all smart, beautiful people. Just keep that in mind and you'll be happy. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria and I look forward to our next class. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>